I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Winds of War by Herman Woke. It's part of a two-book series. The second book is War and Remembrance. So anyway, you know me, I collect a lot of books. I got the trade paperback version and the mass market paperback version of both books. <clears throat> really, it's one giant book. I mean, this book is probably a thousand pages. This book is probably 1,400 pages. But they're really just one massive giant book all about World War II. And I'm going to review each one of them individually. Winds of War, because they're just, they're just huge. I mean, my gosh, they are huge. If you want to re if you want to educate yourself in all things about World War II, from the Americans, the Russians, the Germans, the Japanese, the South Pacific, all of it, all wrapped up and tied up into a really entertaining novel, or two, a big novel, two novels. The Winds of War and War and Remembrance, I mean, that's where it's at. That is where it's at. You will learn so much about World War II history. Oh, I just can't think of another set of books, whether they're nonfiction or fiction, that does a better job of setting up everything about this period in world history. It's magnificent. Not only do we get our fictional characters, the Henry family, and all of their inner workings, but we, we see the war through the eyes of FDR, um, Hitler, all of Hitler's henchmen. We get to see the war through the eyes of Churchill, Stalin, Mussolini, the Japanese, pretty much, I mean, it's like, it's like a master class in world history for a period of about from 1939 to 1946 is when these books. So let's just start out. What, what is, where does the Winds of War book one start? It starts in 1939 with Pug Henry. He's a almost retired Navy captain. He captains big naval ships and he's got a family. He's got Rhoda, his wife, and his three kids, Byron, Warren and Madeline. Now, Henry has done pretty well for him, or Pug, Pug Henry, has done pretty well for himself as a Navy captain. And his wife has loved him, you know, somewhat. She's a real, his wife is one of the great characters because she is a Navy captain's wife. She loves all the perks that comes with being the wife of this pre prestigious guy that has the ear of presidents and kings. But she kind of thinks he's a loser. She kind of like, he's still not good enough for him. Because he's kind of short, kind of stocky, kind of pudgy. Just not good enough. I mean, she's like really like a socialite. Like a New York socialite. Like a rich girl. And extremely hot. Extremely good looking. All the men flock to her. She still looks like a 20 year old. Even though she's had three kids and she's in her 40s. She's... And there's and she's stuck with this navy captain. And she just don't you know don't care for him all that well. And she's quite abusive to the guy. And the dude, he just wants to live in peace. He just he wants his family to just be happy. He wants everybody to just be happy. But he's got this nagging person that's, and it's it's a great setup for a relationship right off the get go. And our guy Pug Henry, he gets assigned by the president to become the attache to Berlin. Because in 1939, my, my gosh, people in the world are like starting to get freaked out by this guy, Hitler. And there's a lot of misinformation coming from everywhere, from Russia, from everywhere. I mean, there's rumors that Hitler is uh, putting people in concentration camps, but they're rumors nobody knows for sure. Half the people believe it, half the people don't. I mean, it's just like today in today's day and age, it's like half the people fall on one side of a conflict or the other. You know, Republican, Democrat. Repu you believe, you don't believe. There's people in cages, there's not people in cages. You know, what's the truth? Well, Pug, our main, main our mainest man here, he gets sent to Berlin to be the attache to Berlin, and he gets to meet, and he takes, his, he takes along his wife, Rhoda, who doesn't really like him that much. And uh, 
You know, they go live in Berlin and they get to hang out with Hitler and all of Hitler's henchmen and all of the people in Berlin and all of the Jews. And, and, they, and they find out that they, the house that they live in, they've been given. The Germans are like, oh, yes, you live in this wonderful house. We've got this big, beautiful home for you to live in. And they're living in it for a while and they find out that it was the home of some Jewish people that got kicked out. And they're, and they're devastated. They're just like, oh, my gosh, we... I, just let the people have their house back. We don't need it. And the Germans are like, yeah, they're just the Jews. You know, I mean, you know, and, and then at that point, Pug starts to figure out, hey, things in Germany are going crazy. Things are just not good. Things are bad over here. The rumors, all the rumors of evil doings that we are been hearing are true. And we got to get ourselves out of this place. And then his son... His son, Warren, is a Navy pilot. Um, so we get to follow Warren's journey through the World War. The beginnings of what This is the winds of war. The winds of war sets everything up. The winds of war takes us from 1939 all the way to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And then this one takes off after that. that but this one is full of so much action and adventure just wartime, pre-wartime intrigue and action and adventure and war and our Navy pilots involved in all of, in some of that. And I won't get into a lot of the plot points. Uh, one of the more interesting stories is the son, Brian, who's more of an artist. And he's living in Europe. He's living in Europe. And he's living in Italy. And he kind of, he's living with this Jewish guy, this author guy. And, and he kind of falls in love with the Jewish guy's daughter. And, um, but the daughter's already sort of engaged to this other really well-known person so there's a lot of love triangle and they are kind of swept off into this up into the uh, german area where you know they're held captive and oh it's just you know the nazis hold them captive for a time and, and they start to figure out so young brian the artist starts to figure out that oh my gosh the germans are going to take over europe and here i am trying to be an artist in italy and just live a nice little artist life and He's like, maybe I should join the army or something along the lines of my dad and my brother. You know, and then we've got the daughter, Madeline. And Madeline is, she stays in America. You know, she's, uh, she d does not do anything her parents want her to do. <laughs> she disobeys everything. And she's, they're like, they have a plan for her to just go off and be married and, and be happy to some rich guy. And she's like, no, I got my own plans. She goes off and works for CBS News as a journalist. So then she's got her own plot going where we get to see the inner workings of how the journalist side of things worked leading up to the war. Through her eyes, we get to see the European, the entire European as a whole set up through the artist Brian's eyes. We get to see the military set up through Warren's eyes. We get to see sort of the upper echelon of the military set up through Pug's eyes and his wife. And Pug and his wife don't get along at all. She's having all sorts of affairs on him. And he knows about it. He, and, and so he finds himself a little young girlfriend. And so it's like a really, really good soap opera -y melodrama set amidst World War II. At least the beginnings of World War II. And all the stuff that's starting to just go bonkers in Europe. And people are starting to get killed, kidnapped, put into concentration camps. And they're all eyewitnesses to it. And it's harrowing. It's absolutely harrowing. It's riveting. 1,000 pages worth of just absolute riveting drama, spy stuff, World War II stuff, action adventure, soap opera -y romances. I, I will say there's a lot of that, but that's all right. It's all right. I mean, this was written by Herman Woke. I mean, he, Herman Woke, by the way, I just read that he lived to be a 104 years old. Herman Woke, the writer, and he's won a Pulitzer Prize. He won the Pulitzer Prize for the Kane Mutiny, if you've ever read that novel. So let's give a, a, a round of applause for, for a 104-year-old writer, Herman Woke, that just passed away. That's too bad. These, I wish he could just die. He's written some of my favorite stuff. These are the best World War II novels that I have in my collection. And I've got a few. My best Civil War novels were John Jake's North and South and Love and War, which are really a lot similar to these. 
And I will review those at one, at one point also. But the winds of war, man, if you want something to just, if you want to, the winds of war and war and remembrance, and I will get to this one sometime. If you just want to dig into and dive into World War II history as it really was, those people, people, I mean, the Germans fooled everybody for such a long time, and people just did not believe the horrors that were being committed. And even when Pug and Brian in our book would report, this is what we've seen, people would not believe them. People would just be like, no, that can't be possible. Well, we ended up finding out that it was possible. We fought a war over it. So the winds of war, oh, just if you want to see what it was like to live in that time and to have those rumors, such awful, evil things being done in the name of the Nazis and just understanding at the time that half the people on the planet just thought you were crazy if you believed it. They thought you were absolutely nuts if you believed that that stuff could happen. And this book goes into great detail in explaining and setting up some situations where, where you're just like frustrated with the government, with the, with the press, with the fake news. I mean, it's all, I mean, you think this stuff is new. No, it's not. The fake news, they were calling it fake news back then too. And it's just amazing, the parallels and things like that that are still going on today with the, you know with the with socialism communism marxism fascism all of the isms is it's been dealt with done we've been we've beaten it we've bludgeoned ourselves over the head with it in, throughout history over and over and over and over and we just still learn we never learn we never learn we just never learn and it's a great, these, these books are great, great, magnificent introductions to that period in history. And, and, and Herman Woke goes into such great detail in describing every last thing about what happened and why it happened, how it happened in these novels. And it's all in a novel form. It's all wrapped around the story of this family. And it just... Uh, blows my mind. I wish, I wish and hope I can write something as absolutely just brilliant as these books someday. Something that will stand the test of time and people will be reading forever and ever and ever. And I'd like to live to be 104. Just like Orm Herman Woke. The Winds of War by Herman Woke. If you people don't read this after I just told you how awesome it was, I'm going to be pissed. 9.5 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. This, this is great, great stuff. 